Fight fam, smash that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification. Class in session. Undisputed super middleweight Saul Canelo Alvarez versus undisputed super welterweight Jermel Charlo should be an entertaining spectacle. We'll focus on styles and skills and leave the circumstances of the fight for the end. Let's get into it. Jermel Charlo is either going to live or die by the lead hand. He's likely either going to find success using it well or forfeit the fight to Canelo by underusing the lead hand or using it improperly. In the best case scenario, he's controlling space and the pace with the lead hand as he jabs, probes, and feints, keeping Canelo at his desired range on his own terms. When range is set, Mel eventually sets up one of boxing's best one-twos or jab crosses which have been staples to his success throughout his career. The lead hand is crucial because when Canelo moved up in weight, he adopted a come forward pressure style that is still dedicated to counter punching. It was his adjustment to taller, lengthier opponents. Built in that style is a footwork issue that some have been able to exploit with the lead hand. Canelo steps back foot first or gathers his feet, stepping the back leg forward towards the lead leg and plods on the lead foot, putting all of his weight on it with a high guard. Normally it's to set a trap for an opponent's jab that typically involves a block and shoot or slip counter with Canelo's lead hand. If there is no response from the pressure, Canelo simply attacks from that position. Enticing the jab to counter is likely favored, but anything his opponent commits to will be countered. However, the plotting front foot with the high guard creates a balance issue where Canelo is completely front foot heavy in range when he has to move his back leg forward. If his opponents don't commit to the jab and aim to control the guard instead, the strategy can be completely neutralized as we saw versus Dimitri Bavol. Also, when facing a good to great jab, Canelo has shown not to have the greatest jab defense. At times, Canelo could be a sucker for a lead hand feint that pulls his backhand away from his chin to parry, only to be replaced on his chin by the opponent's glove. That high guard he uses also works to limit his vision. The high guard allows him relatively safer passage mid-range, but always leaves the peep hole that he struggles to close at times. Not to mention, opponents have timed that plotting step forward with the jab and had success. It's definitely not as sweet as it seems. Jermel Charlo hasn't proven to have as educated of a lead hand as Dimitri Bavol. Plus, Canelo's traps and counter punches are typically geared to entice the jab so any mistakes and Mel could pay dearly. Charlo has a tendency to throw the mid-range jabs that Canelo was looking for.
Charlo also has an issue in technical form where he throws his jab to the body without properly changing levels or he ends up just lowering his head towards the opponent's guard. A dangerous position he likely pays for against a sharp counterpuncher like Canelo. Jermel might struggle landing a follow-up cross in that one two as well. Canelo typically doesn't get hit often by basic punches in combination like the one two or one two three. He has a great active high guard that moves to deflect traditional punches that most boxers throw. The active high guard is easier to deploy when there is a specific sequence and rhythm to anticipate as opposed to a broken rhythm or rare sequence that forces the defense to rely more on reflexes and hand-eye coordination. Charlo's on his A game, he also has a good step back game, keeping up with the theme of controlling distance and spacing. eventually he turns that step back game into various counter punches. Important because Canelo tends to initiate offense with various penetration steps followed by wide power punches that a good step back game can evade then counter. The other plus is that Canelo loads up on all those shots which seems to rapidly deplete his stamina. We've seen Canelo gas out in the later rounds on a number of occasions. Charlo's conditioning at 154 has always been excellent, so in theory, if the conditioning is the same with the weight gain, then Charlo could possibly take advantage. Charlo isn't on his A game, he gets happy feet and tends to back himself into disadvantageous ring positioning against or towards the ropes. Real estate to move in any direction is always important when controlling distance. If Jermel Charlo's jab and footwork isn't on point, he'll continuously be forced into 50-50 exchanges with Canelo Alvarez, where he'll have a bunch of major issues. Mel's issues with controlling distance typically put him in 50-50 exchanges, where at 154 he had the speed, power, and beard to win most of them. But going two weight classes up to fight the best beard, hardest punching, most skilled opponent you have ever fought is likely a mountain too tall to climb. So much so that breaking down tendencies of each fighter in those 50-50 exchanges is likely pointless. In the Charlo vs. Zhu film study, I said there will likely come a time where the risks of the 50-50 exchanges will be greater than the reward. Well, that time has come. It's possible that Jermel Charlo can get his hand raised in this fight, but highly improbable. It makes more sense to be talking about Canelo by knockout or Canelo by decision.